And don't forget to subscribe to Bag O' Day Crochet. You can subscribe by clicking this red button right here. And don't forget to click this little bell right there next to it. That way you'll always be notified whenever Bag O' Day puts on a new video. everybody it's crystal so today i'm going to show you how to make this little container for diapers and wipes you can put your wipes back in there whenever you're done with them so they don't dry up and stuff and that's what it looks like it has a magnetic button so you're going to need to get a magnetic button the ones that flip over and they hook together they snap together now, if you don't have the magnetic button and you don't want to use the magnetic button, you can always put a strap here and sew a button on the outside, like a chain strap or a regular strap with a button on. That's completely up to you. You can do it however you want. You can also tie strings and make it wrap up and put a tie there. So, you know, it's however you want to do it. I just uh, thought that it looked cleaner with the magnetic button, but you can do it any way that you want. And um, the type of yarn I used Bernat um, cotton. This was actually a donation, so I give thank you, Randy, for donating this to me. I really appreciate it. Um, it's a medium weight, uh, four ply, 100% cotton yarn. Um, I used cotton to make it a little bit more durable, but if all you have is acrylic, I think that'll work too. It just will be maybe a little bit flimsier but it's still going to turn out the same and there are approximately 68 yards in each of these little rolls and I used almost all of four rows for a skein so you're going to need uh, just to guess about 280 yards of yarn and then I used a size I which is a, a five and a half millimeter crochet hook Okay, you want to start off with a chain of 32. We're going to be working the bobble, the big bobble stitch rows. And the bobble stitch is done in a multiple of two. So, once you get your chain of 32, and I already did my big piece, so I'm going to show you on a smaller scale how to do the bobble. But you want to start with 32. And once you get your chain of 32 done, you want to single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. And remember that we don't count the one that's on our hook, so single crochet in that second stitch and then you want to put one single crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain just like that okay once you make it to the end of the row we're going to start off by chaining two and turn in our work. Now these are called five double crochet together bobbles. So what it is, it's five double crochets together to make a bobble. So this chain two, the beginning bobble is always going to be just a little bit different than the rest of them. So the beginning bobble starts out with a chain two and we're going to work right back into the same spot right here and we're going to yarn over and go right into that same spot and draw up a loop and we're going to yarn over and go through the first two loops. Now for the beginning bobble we're going to do that four times. So that was one. We're going to yarn over, go in to the next spot, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two. So that was two times. Yarn over, go into the same spot, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two. That was three times. Yarn over, go into the same spot, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops and on the beginning bobble you'll have five loops on your hook yarn over and go through all five just like that pull it tight and then single crochet into the next stitch and that will make the bobble stick out just like that so that's how the beginning bobble is done now all the rest of them are going to be done the same they are yarn over and go into the next stitch and draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops. We're going to do it five times now for the rest of the bubbles. So that was one, yarn over, go in, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two. So that was two times.
three times. Four times. Five times. Now on these bobbles that aren't the beginning bobble, you'll have six loops on your hook. You want to yarn over and go through all six. Pull it tight and single crochet in the very next stitch. Now the reason why the beginning bobble is different is because it has that chain two on the end, which is actually acting as part of the double crochet. It's part of, uh, part of one of the double crochets. So that's why you only do four instead of five. Now we're going to go to the next stitch and do this bobble again. So we're going to yarn over and go into the next stitch and drop a loop. Yarn over and go to the first two loops on my hook. And we're going to do that five times because we're not doing the beginning bobble. It's two. Three. Four. Five. And you'll have six loops. Yarn over, go through all six. Pull it tight and single crochet right into the next stitch like that and if you flip it you'll see your bobbles starting to form again we'll work into the next stitch and do your five double crochet together bobble yarn over go in draw up a loop go through the first two do that five times two Three, four, five, six loops on my hook, yarn over and go through all six, pull it tight, and single crochet into the next stitch. Now you just want to repeat that pattern to the end of your row. So we'll do the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six loops on my hook, yarn over, go through all six, pull tight, single crochet into the next stitch. So I'm going to keep working this until I get to the end of my row. Okay, when you make it to the end of your chain, you should have room to do one bobble. So I just did that bobble and I yarn over it and I went through all six loops on my hook. Now what I'm going to do is chain one and turn. Now I'm going to do a row of single crochet across the top of these bobbles. So right here is where on the top of this bobble, you can kind of flip your and you see it. It's where you want to put your first single crochet like that and then the next one goes right here on the side of this bobble and then the next one goes right here and then on the side and then on the top of this bobble And then on the side of this one, if you flip it, you should be able to see where the stitches go. So you can see the stitches there. And when you want to keep doing this until you get to the end of the row. And when you get to the end of the row, you should have 31 single crochets. Okay, when you make it to the end here, I'm getting ready to do my last single crochet. And you counted and you have 31 single crochets, not counting that chain one. 31 besides that one. And remember, mine's smaller because I started smaller. You want to go ahead and chain two, one, two, and turn your work. And now we're just going to repeat those last two rows. 
So now we're going to do our bob bobble row. And remember, this is the beginning bobble, so it's a little bit different. We did our chain two. Now we're going to work right back in in the same stitch and yarn over, go into it, draw up a loop, yarn over, and go to the first two loops. And we want to do that four times on the beginning one. That's two, three, and four. And on the beginning one, we'll have five loops. Yarn over and go through all five, pull it tight, and single crochet into the next stitch. Like that. And now the remaining of the bobbles are going to be just the five double crochet together bobbles. So yarn over and go in draw up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, and we're going to do that a total of five times. And here's five. And now we'll have six loops on our hook. Yarn over and go through all six. Pull tight and single crochet into the next stitch. So now we're just going to keep repeating these two rows. After this row of bobbles will be a row of single crochet, then a row of bobbles, then a row of single crochets, and a row of bobbles. And you want to keep repeating until you have 14 rows of these bobble stitches. Okay, I got my 14 rows of bobbles done. And I went ahead and I did my last row of bobbles and then I did this a row of single crochet on top of it. So I ended with a row of single crochet. Now I didn't tie off or anything. Now I'm going to go around the whole piece with a row of single crochet. That way it'll be easier to sew on the flaps on the inside. So I'm just going to pick up where I left off. I'm going to put one single crochet in every stitch and then I'm going to put two in each of the four corners. And some of these, it's going to be kind of hard to see where these stitches go. So I kind of just evenly space out my single crochets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put another one right back in the same stitch since it's a corner. Like that. So now I got two in that corner stitch. Now I'm going to work my way down the side putting one single crochet in every stitch. So I'm kind of going to go right here at the top of this one. And then right about here. And then right here. And then right here at the top part. Probably go right through there. Right here on the side. And right here in this spot. And then on top again. Like I said, I'm just kind of evenly spacing these out, so. So I'm going to keep working all the way down this side here. And you can see it makes the edge nice and clean. Okay, I made it back down to the first corner. Here's where I started. And I worked my way down. And when I get down here, I just put two single crochets in this corner. And now I'm just going to continue across again, putting one single crochet in every stitch and you should be able to see these single crochets a lot better because it's on the bottom of the piece so I'm just going to work my way across Just like that. And I'm going to keep going until I get to this corner. And when I get to this corner, I'll put two single crochets into the corner stitch. And then I'll evenly space out my single crochets up this side. And then I'll put two corners in this. And then I'll go across this 
top piece with the row single crochet and I'm going to end up right where I started. Okay, I went all the way around my whole piece and I've made it back to the beginning. And what I want to do is just slip stitch into the very first single crochet that we made. And then you can clip your yarn, tie that off, and hide your tail. Okay, for the inside flaps, you want to start out with a chain of 33. And once you get your chain of 33 made, we're just going to be doing rows of single crochet. So you want to start in the second stitch from the hook and single crochet. Like that. And then we're going to put one single crochet in every stitch for the length of your chain. Just like this. All the way until you get to the end of the chain. Okay, once you make it to the end of your row, we're just going to chain one, turn our work, and we're going to start in not this very, very first one here, but this one, because that chain one is acting as our first single crochet, which would go here. So we're going to put the next one right there. And then I'm going to put one single crochet again and every single stitch across until I get to my end of the row. Just like that. Okay, again, when you make it to the end of the row, you want to make sure your last stitch is always that chain one from the previous row. That way your row won't be crooked. Just like that. And then we're going to chain one and turn, and we're going to go again, not starting in this one, but this one. One single crochet in every stitch. And we're going to do this for a total of eight rows. So right now we're working on our third one. So I'm going to keep working on my third row until I get to eight rows total. Okay, once you get your eight rows finished, now I'm going to make a slit in the center so for the wipe section, so you can pull the wipes out of it. So I just finished my eighth row, so now I'm going to chain one and turn. Now I'm going to single crochet. I want to have 11 stitches over total. And remember we said this chain one counts as one, so that's one. We're going to go right here and this will be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and there's 11. Now we're going to do a chain of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now we're going to skip 10 stitches, so count over, starting with the next one after the single crochet. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we're going to single crochet in the 11th. Just like that. And now I'm going to work my way across and single crochet in the remaining stitches. There should be 11 left. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <clears throat> eight, nine, ten, and then this chain one makes a total of 11. So there's a little slip that we made. I apologize if you hear that noise outside. My husband just started mowing. So he's next to my window. So. Now I'm going to chain one and turn. Now I'm going to go ahead and do eight more rows of one single crochet in every stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start single crochet and I'll show you what we do when we get to that chain. So I'm just going to single crochet up to the chain.
And since we did 10 stitches, um, or 10 chains, we're going to do 10 single crochets across the chain. Now you can do one single crochet in every stitch of the chain if you want, but I like to just go right through the chain and do it. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and then I kind of just slide them over and space them out, and they'll look better when you get another, they'll space out on their own when you get another row on top of them, but I kind of just slide them across the chain here. And now I'm just going to go ahead and jump over here to this first single crochet, single crochet in it, and then just finish single crocheting all the way to the end. And it's just back and forth rows again of single crochet, just like we were doing before. And I want to do a total of eight more. So that was, this is our first one. So we want to do seven more after this one. Just like that. And then I'm going to chain one and turn and go across it again. So counting from the bottom up, by the time you get done, you'll have a total of 17 rows. Okay, once you get all your rows done, we have we did the eight, and then we did the one that we put the split in, so that was nine, and then we did eight more for a total of 17 altogether. Now what we're going to do, I didn't tie off yet, but what we're going to do now is we're going to go around the whole piece with single crochet, just like we did our big piece. And we're going to put one single crochet in every stitch and two single crochets in each of the corners. So I just did my last single crochet there. So I'm going to go ahead and go right back in that same stitch and put another single crochet. So there's two single crochets in that first corner stitch. And now I'm going to work my way down, putting one single crochet in every stitch. Should be able to see that you need one for each row. Just kind of right here. Right here. Here's the next row. The next row. And then when you get down here to this corner, I'm going to go ahead and put two single crochets in that corner. And then I'm just going to continue going around the whole piece. Just like that all the way around so one single in every stitch except for the four corners so each get two okay after you finished and you went all the way around the whole piece you just want to slip stitch into your first single crochet and then you can tie that off and clip your yarn like that so there is the spot and you can pull wipes out of. Now I need to do another one for the diaper side. And it's gonna be done the exact same, except for we're not gonna put the slit in the middle. So you just start with your chain of 33, and you just single keep it single crochet in rows for 17 rows, and then you just go around it, just like we did for this piece. So it's exactly the same, except for we're not gonna leave the slit in it. Okay, when you put these over here on your piece, I know it might look like they're a little bit shorter, but they're not. It's they're gonna they're gonna fit when you sew them on. 
It's just this piece got a little stretched out when we were doing the bobbles, but they'll, it'll, it'll work fine. So don't freak out if it's a little bit shorter because it'll sew up right. But right now what you want to do is we want to put your magnetic button on before we sew them on. I mean, you can do it after, but I think it's a little easier to do it to do it before. So what you do is we're going to put one on this piece here and then on this piece up here. So when they close, they'll click together. So on these, you just... You want to make sure they're in the same spots too so they'll line up. I always just kind of eyeball it. Let me move this big piece out of the way. So just try to get it kind of in the center of your piece here. And this is what they kind of look like on the back. And what you do is you just, I'm just going to kind of stick it down here towards the bottom. Try to look and get it as centered best I can. And then it goes through your stitches like that. And then they have a back. You put the back on like that. And then if you want to use a pair of pliers, you can. But you squeeze these things. I'll probably have to get some pliers. I usually have my husband do it, but squeeze them really tight, and they'll lock on it. Yeah, I need some pliers. But anyways, you just pull these little arms down, push them down, squeeze them together with some pliers, and then it'll be locked on there. On this other piece, this is my good side, so I'm going to sew it at the top of this one. So when I lay it out on my piece, it'll be like this. This is my good side of this one, and this is my good side, if you have a good side. There. It's, I think, this side looks better on mine. So good side, good side. This piece goes at the top of this one and at the bottom of this one. And then when it closes, they'll snap together like that. So that's how you put that button, magnetic button on. Just make sure they're about in the same spot so when they close, they snap together. So I'm going to go ahead and get a pair of pliers and get these on. And of course, you don't have to use the magnetic button. You can sew a button on the outside and make a little strap or something if you want, if you don't have these. But I'm going to go ahead and get a pair of pliers to get these on here tight. And then we'll go ahead and start sewing it together. Okay, now to sew it together, I'm going to sew it together by slip stitching it. So... I'm going to lay my top piece out up here, lined up, and then I'm going to lay my bottom piece right down here, lined up. And how I line them up is, I kind of just put them together, and I just follow the stitches to where they match up, like that. And that way you know where to start this piece. If you want to put a stitch marker here, uh, you can. That way you know where to start this piece and you, you know you can do the same for all of them once you get them lined up. I kind of always just eyeball it but I'm going to start, I'm going to slip stitch it together and I'm going to start with this piece and I'm going to slip stitch it together and when I get to here I'm just going to slip stitch this by itself and continue around and then slip stitch this together, slip stitch slip stitch it together here and then when I get to this empty spot I'm just going to slip stitch on these stitches by themselves and then this side slip stitch all the way back up to my starting point point. and the reason why I just slip stitch all the way around and I don't stop here um, since we got slip stitches on the side here we just wanted to continue the same look right here so I'm going to go ahead and start up here in the corner get your stitches all lined up so it's equal kind of look and make sure you're getting the same stitch on this piece and this piece. Just go in. And pull your yarn through. And I am going to chain one. Now I'm going to go along. I'm going to go into the next stitch and then the next stitch on this back piece and slip stitch. The next stitch here, 
the next stitch on this back piece and slip stitch and I'm going to do this all the way around Okay, once you get that piece on, I'm just going to jump off or quit um, right here in this uh, space that's empty. I'm just going to put slip stitches in them stitches. I'm not slip stitching anything together. I'm just going right through, through the empty spot. That way it just kind of gives it the same look here around the edge. But you must remember that we're going to tie in this other piece now. So you got to know where to start it. Like I said, you could you could follow it up and put a stitch marker. I'm just going to kind of follow the stitches up, matching them up right here, so I know counting them, so I know that they're the same on each side. That way they sew together correctly. So I'm going to need to start my next, start sewing them together right here. I'll just go ahead and put a little pin here that way you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to continue doing this slip stitch over here in this bare area. Until I get up here to this spot. Here it is. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out my marker and I'm going to start. Adding, I'm going to add my other piece now. Just like that. And I'm going to slip stitch it on the same way. Just stitch here and stitch back here and then slip stitch it. Okay, then when you make it down here, you just keep going around the corner. And then you just work your way across here. Matching the stitches up. Oh. Just like that. And that's what it starts to look like. And you want to just continue doing that all the way around, then back up to here, and then right here you don't you just slip stitch, but you don't slip any, stitch anything together like we did here. And then you want to make sure you count down here and get the so you get the the right spot to start in to start connecting this piece, and then go around and all the way back to the beginning. Okay, when you make it all the way back to the beginning, you just want to slip stitch into that first slip stitch. And then you can tie this off. And you want to hide all your tails now. Now, if you notice that your piece is kind of... These, they're the same size. It's just this, this back piece was stretched so much from putting the bobbles in. 
eventually it's going to lay flat it's, once this piece stretches. But I always kind of give it a little stretch to help it out, help it start to lay flat. Get it all that, and then you can close it, and you got your piece here. And you can fit your... I only got one of my buttons on right now. I still have to put the other one on. I, uh, my kid took off with it and I can't find it, so don't mind that. But I will, I'll find it and I'll get it put on. But this is you kind of just put your diapers in here. And put your pack of wipes in here and pull it through. And like this. And there. This isn't one of them little small packs. It's a big pack, so... But, like that and then when you're done you can just push it back in keep it from drying out I'll have to get one of them small packs to go in here but, but for now I just want to show you should be able to put a few diapers in here too so but that's it that's all there is to it and just close it up and snap it shut and take it with you stick it in your diaper bag or whatever you want to do with it take it to the park but that's all there is to it I gotta hide a few more tails but that's it Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And if you make this or anything else, I'd really like to see a picture of it. You can post the picture on my Bag of Day Crochet Facebook page. I'll put a link to that below in the description box. And until next time, have a good day.